Ruger single action half cock hammer and trigger kit. Here's what you receive in your kit. You receive your selected hammer and trigger, 30 ounce reduced trigger return spring, a 17 pound mainspring, an 18 pound mainspring, and a 19 pound mainspring. That's what you get when you get the kit with the instructions and be sure you read all instructions before you try to assemble this in your revolver. Now this particular Blackhawk revolver, this Bisley style spur was selected with a Blackhawk type trigger. These are poly sprite to semi match the revolver. So we basically have a new revolver and we're going to disassemble this revolver and install these parts. So first thing you do is remove the grips from the revolver. It's always a good idea to be sure the firearm is unloaded. Remove the cylinder. Close the loading gate if you like. Now we're ready to capture the hammer main spring. And you have to point it up because if you don't, see the base pin's not in and it does not push the transfer bar off of the firing pin. See, if you point it down, you can't cock it, but if you point it up, you can. Either that or leave the base pin in all the way like that. See, and it'll cock down or up, either one. So, whichever way you wish, I usually leave the base pin out, and that way I can, once I get the hammer cocked back like that, see, I'm okay. I can remove it with no problem. Okay. We have to capture the main spring. So you cock the hammer back. I like to use a 16th inch Allen key. A straightened out paper clip will work perfect. So the main spring is captured. The next thing we do is unlock the trigger hooks, the trigger spring hooks. We unlock them. Now the pressure's off. See the hammer, the trigger, and either one has spring tension. So we're ready to remove the back strap and trigger guard. On a factory Ruger, these are all one part. So you be sure you have a proper fitting screwdriver. It really doesn't make much difference which screw you remove first. Now, according to the instructions that you generally read, you'll find that the bottom screw on the left-hand side is longer because the end of it is used to capture the hammer pivot pin. See, just like that. So that's where this screw goes, is always on the left side. Now, you'll receive revolvers, even brand new ones straight from the factory, that it'll be turned around on the other side. So regardless whichever side that this screw goes on depends on whichever way this hammer pivot pin is installed, but this is the way the book says. Remove the long screw, then remove the next bottom screw. All right, you see the two back screws are the same length these are the two screws from the bottom. The long one's the left side and this one's the right side. Now the shortest of the five screws is the one that goes in the front of the trigger guard. I like to lay them out far enough apart I can pick them up. I can identify them real quick and pick them up when I go to put them back in the correct space. There you are. Now, what we're going to do to this is put a reduced power trigger return spring in. Take the main spring and the strut out. Now, this is your trigger return spring. You'll see how it's captured with a 3 seconds diameter pin. Usually, sometimes they fall out when you're taking the revolver apart. But if you cannot push it through like that, you can Put it in a vise and use a punch and a hammer. Now this is your 30 ounce 
spring. See the difference in the size? This is the factory, much larger diameter wire and much stronger than this one. So that will be put aside and we're going to use this one. Now generally, an easy way to do that if the pin falls out, which it generally does, put it back in with just a little bit sticking out. Take this spring and put it back in there. Sometimes it's a little hard to manipulate, especially with big fingers. There you are. Same place. So basically that's all we have to do with the back strap and trigger guard assembly. This is your cylinder, latch, spring, and plunger. So you got to keep track of it to be sure you don't lose it while you're working on the revolver. So we'll lay that to the side. Now we're ready to take the internals out of the receiver. The easiest way to do it is usually a solid bench vise for ease ability to illustrate. We'll put a padded jaw three inch vise here on the table. This way we don't have to fight holding the revolver. Now this spring and plunger here is your paw spring and plunger. Be sure not to lose it. Now we're ready to disassemble the trigger and the hammer. So anytime you can push out the hammer pin. Now you can't push the trigger pin out until you depress the loading gate spring, which that goes in a groove on a trigger pivot pin and that's what holds the pin in place. So Usually I push this up like that, that unlatches it from the loading gate on the far side. And then you can depress this. There's a little tool made to depress it, but this seems to work pretty good. Just like that. Now, here's your hammer and trigger assembly, it comes out just like that. Now when you go back together, you can put it back together like that. That's an easy way to do it. Just like that. So this is your cylinder latch. We're going to put it back on and push that pin through just far enough to hold that cylinder latch on. Now we're, all we're going to do is replace these parts. So we're going to take the Black Hawk trigger. Now before we can replace them, here is your transfer bar. And what you have to do is alter this transfer bar in this area right here it has to come down about a hundred thousandths and about to that thickness now a lot of these are so hard you can't file them some of them you can file and you can file that notch in there and do real well like that but most of your stainless revolvers or stainless parts and even some of the blued ones nowadays they're so hard you can't file that real easy so you have to grind that notch in there and we manufacture one already altered and it'll save you a lot of work and time. Here it is. See the difference in that step right there? So we will discard that or lay it to the side. Here's a transfer bar we're going to use. See, and it goes in your trigger like this. And your trigger turns around and goes in like that. We take the Bisley spurred hammer and place the paw on the hammer and then we pick it up and we put it in the same position we took it out just like this line them up and they almost drop in that's the easy way to do it so remember pivot pin goes on the left hand side revolver so with it upside down it'll go on this side here we line it up place it in the hammer like that now the next thing we do is have to line up the trigger and press the trigger pivot pin in. We get it started here. Sometimes they're a little stubborn when they are, you might need a little bit of help. 
There. See that? Trigger pivot pin is in. Now here's your loading gate spring. Now whenever we let it pop up like that for easeability to remove the other parts, we have to engage the lower end of that. I'll show you here. See this end here? This is out of the loading gate. So what we want to do is put this back in the loading gate. So you can push the spring in up there and take a screwdriver and reach in there like that. And it'll pop back in. So now it's engaged in the loading gate. These parts are in and we're ready to put it back together. Just like that. Now what we did not do is put in the reduced power main spring on the hammer strut. Turn it around like that. Straight up and down. This can be done several ways. Now to disassemble is no problem. You can just grab a hold of them, pull the pin out, and they'll all fly apart. See, just like that. That spring will not be used. Here's a 17 pound spring. Place it on there. Now you want to put the saddle back on just the way it came off. So the easy way to do that that I found is use a pair of pliers, depress the main spring, put that little keeper back on like that, place your Allen wrench back through the hole in the same direction it came apart in, just like that. There you are. Now see, when we put this strut in there, it has to have this curve going that direction. That's why we just keep track of the direction of the keeper pin like that. So now we're ready to put this back on the revolver. So the first thing you do, be sure your gate spring is latched in. Now you put your paw spring and plunger back in the top hole, the one that doesn't have threads in it. That's the one it goes in. Pick up your back strap trigger guard assembly. Hold the reduced power spring down by the ears of the back of the spring. That lets this end come up. Be sure that this spring and plunger is in there in that right location. Now to put it back together, you be sure you go on straight just like that. Now while you're holding it like that, you reach in. When you're holding it together, be sure you got spring tension on your cylinder latch. So you push down like that so I know that that spring and plunger is lined up. Now it's usually I just turn it over and put the small screw in the front first. It don't have to be real tight, but it needs to be in there. For easeability, we'll just put the shorter screw in the bottom, the shorter bottom screw. You don't need to put all the screws in it right now. Just a couple like that's enough to hold it together. Snug. All right. Now, the next thing we do is hook the ears of the trigger spring back in their position like that. Now, this is the way I do it. There's several ways you can do this, but I found this to be the easiest way. Is take your main spring strut, slide it in the position where it goes. Now you see it won't go all the way in right here. You be sure it's engaged in the slot in the hammer. Push that in right there. See that? Now, pull the hammer back and you can remove your Allen key for keeper. See, now it works. All right. Now what we'll do, it appears to work right. As you pull the hammer back, you see your cylinder latch start pulling down. The paw then rises and starts on the ratchet on your cylinder. And as it comes up, the load on the top of the paw is transferred over to the second step of the paw. 
in the next ratchet, and that's what turns the cylinder. The cylinder should rotate, and if you want it time perfect, just as the hammer cocks, the cylinder latch should lock into the cylinder stop. Now, generally, the cowboy action shooters, and, and most of shooters that shoot single action, it's, it's natural to draw the hammer all the way to the rear every time you cock the revolver. So for it to work real smooth, the least amount of effort, and you should be able to cock the hammer back, and the hammer would cock on the trigger. Now perfect timing's right there on that cylinder, see? Well, it didn't cock, see? The cylinder locked up. See, the hammer didn't cock. That's with our hammer. Now we've designed that hammer so you can refit the paw and get perfect timing if you want. Perfect timing is when the cylinder locks up exactly the same time the hammer cocks. Now the cowboy action shooters shooting fast, they want to have what you call overcock on the hammer. So they draw the hammer real quick all the way to the rear. The cylinder will lock up after the hammer and sear engage together and the hammer cocks, then the hammer will come back just a little bit further and lock up the cylinder. So see, with our new hammer, the second step of the paw is too long because you can't cock it on any of the cylinders, see? Now we'll drop the half cock, I'll put it on half cock, open the loading gate, see? And we'll sing. Anyway, that should back it up when you put it on half cock. That should be lined up with the center line of the loading gate area for ejecting the fired cartridge and reloading another one. But what we have to do now is correct the problem that we have on this particular firearm. So what it is is the hammer will not cock. That means the second step's too long. Everything else seems to work all right. Remove the cylinder. Now we go back and do the same thing again. We have to completely disassemble it. Now you can disassemble the trigger and the trigger pivot pin and the hammer and the hammer pivot pin and get the hammer out with the trigger assembly. But sometimes you can take the hammer out without removing the trigger. So we'll try that. We'll push the hammer pivot pin out, put the action down, hold it forward, lift the hammer up like that, and look at there, it come right out. Now, here is the case. See this second step right here? It's trying to turn the cylinder further than what it can turn because the cylinder latch is already locked in. So the only way you can do this is trial and error. And since it didn't cock on all six of these cylinders, we know we can probably take off maybe five thousandths, roughly, but it's just trial and error. So we're gonna take some off of it and try it. So we had to put that in the vise. Just like that. And then we get a file. Since I'm right-handed, we'll turn it around like this. A Barrett file is a good file to use on this. And you keep the same angle that's on there. Now, we don't know if we got enough off of it or not, but it's strictly trial and error. So we put the paw back on the hammer, pull the trigger forward, put that in there. Now you see this plunger on the hammer? You can get it down just like that and depress it and it'll slide right in. All guns won't do that, but most of them will. Now, we're ready to go again. Okay, put the cylinder in. It's almost perfect timing. 
See, at the same time the cylinder locks up, the hammer cocks. That's perfect timing. Now, if we had a little overcock on it for the cowboy action shooters, we could shorten that uh, paw a couple, three more thousandths. When we'd come back here to this point, the hammer would cock right there, and then a little more cock on the hammer, the cylinder would lock. Either way is all right. It depends on how you want it. If you want it to have perfect timing, you can time it to where the hammer will cock and the cylinder will lock up at the same time. All right, we're ready to put the rest of the screws in. Half cock, open the loading gate. There's your ejector rod working. Should be fine. Let's see what the trigger weighs. Two pounds and 4.5 ounces. So, a little better than two pound trigger pull. Put the grips on it and go test fire it. Should be fine. 